Hi there. So today I'd like to show you a few right hand open string arpeggio combinations. I remember playing these first during my first year of college a long time ago in, in the early 90s and they certainly revolutionized not only my playing, my right hand approach to the strings but also my sound. And uh, I'd like to share a few of these patterns with you today. And now these can be written out if you, if you need it, but they don't really require music notation. They're easy enough to just memorize and play them without really using any sheet music. Uh, these won't involve any use of your left hand, so you can just rest it, just rest it on your knee or just let it, let it go down, whatever you want to do. But it will not require any use of your left hand. Now here are some patterns that you can try on your own. Before I start showing you these patterns, I'd like to say that uh, most classical guitarists, or at least many classical guitarists, will use what's called a prepared arpeggio or a planted arpeggio. And what that means is that when you play an ascending arpeggio, like the one I just did, for example, thumb on fourth, index on third, middle on second, ring on first and you play this arpeggio on open strings for example most classical guitarists or at least many classical guitarists would first plant their fingers on the strings that they're about to play and only then play them you will see when I do a close-up shot in a couple of seconds so I first plant my fingers on the strings and then I play them one finger at a time instead of fishing for the notes and hoping that I hit the right string. So it's called planting or preparing the arpeggio. Also another very important thing here is that as soon as you play the note you want to completely relax that finger. In other words don't keep it curled after you play. You want to you play you want to release it right away. You want to let its weight Kind of, kind of push it back out. Don't keep it curled because uh, that's not good for your right hand. It's not conducive to fast and relaxed playing. So in other words, I play my thumb and as soon as I do, I relax it. I play my index and as soon as I do, I relax it, middle and, and ring finger. So keep those two things in mind. Prepare your arpeggios for the ascending arpeggios and as soon as you play the finger, relax the finger. Relax it right away. Now there's different approaches to this first joint in each finger. Some people will ask you to bend it and allow the finger to, to straighten up like this. Some people will keep them like curved. I'm gonna leave that up to you. There's there's two different, at least two different thoughts on that on that thing. So I'll let you decide on that. I do a little bit of both depending on the kind of attack that I want to achieve. So there you have it. Here are some examples for you to try. Okay, so before I get started, I want to remind you that the thumb is labeled with a P, the index with an I, the middle with an M, and the ring with an A. So P, I, M, A. We don't really use the pinky when we play the classical guitar because it's too short and if we used it, it would misplace our hand. So we just end up not using it most of the time. So P, I, M, A. And here's the first arpeggio pattern you can try. Again, you don't need your left hand, so you can just hold it here or on your knee or just let it go down or whatever you want. So the first one is simply P, I, M, A in that order. And notice how, how, how I'm preparing the arpeggio, I'm planting the fingers on the strings and I just do this. Plant, play. Plant, play. You can do it many times in a row. You should actually move the thumb back and forth so the, the best way to do this, I think, is this way. I moved 
the thumb from the D string to the A string to the E string and back to the A string and back to the D string. I wouldn't worry about stopping the notes in between. You're not really playing a piece. It's just an exercise. You just let them ring. So here's the first one, P-I-M-A. The second one we can try is P I A M in that order. So P I A M. So now I'm only going to prepare the ascending notes. And when I say ascending, I'm referring to the notes on the staff. It looks like it's going down direction wise, but on the music staff in the music book, the notes would actually be going up. So that's why I'm saying ascending. So you only want to prepare the ascending notes. Thumb, index, and ring, and then the middle place. So this is P, I, A, M, like so. them slow and relaxed right now and you can definitely use the metronome and increase the speed and keep your hand your right hand relaxed at all times even when you do increase the speed and remember to release the finger as soon as as soon as you play it you want to release the finger don't keep it curled up okay here's another you can try thumb middle ring and then index so I'm not gonna prepare the index so it's P M, A, and then I, like so. Okay. The next one you can try is um, you can try P, M I A. This one's a little unusual as far as planting the fingers. I only plant the first two fingers. I do not plant M and A afterwards. I just plant the first two fingers. So I have P M I A, like so. Something like that. I wouldn't stop for little mistakes. It's just an exercise. Uh, the next one you can try, and maybe the last one for today, would be uh, thumb. So P A M I. Again, P A M I. And obviously, I would only prepare these two fingers, thumb and ring. Because those are the first two ascending notes and then the other come descending so something like this okay now there's other many other combinations especially when you start playing fingers at the same time for example uh, some variation of this except that's now a blocked chord it's no longer an arpeggio but sometimes you can block couples of fingers so for example you can do so what I'm doing there I'm actually blocking all of the fingers all four fingers but I'm playing P I and then M and A together and then back to I so almost a blocked chord it's still somewhat arpeggiated though something like this Okay. Of 
course, you can also do thumb, middle, and index ring. So that's P, M, I, A. Of course, that's a variation of this. I think I did. If I didn't, I should have. No matter what speed you play these at, it, the most important thing is that you're accurate that you try to prepare if possible, and that you keep your right hand fingers very relaxed. As soon as you play the note, you want them to relax, to kind of snap back from their own weight, okay? Here's that first one again that I showed you. You can do it backwards as well if you, if you like. Now, if this sound bothers you because it's really not a chord, it sounds somewhat dissonant, then you can finger a chord on your left and maybe an E minor or something and hold that down while you play through these. Okay, even though I wouldn't really recommend that because you're gonna tire your left hand and I like to really just focus on my, on my, on, on my right hand uh, when I play these. If the sound really bothers you, I mean, I guess you can tune your guitar to some chord when you when you tune it up. Um, I just tuned my fifth string to a B, and my fourth string to an E. I have, look, no fingers here. It's an open E minor chord because I tuned it, so I guess you can do that. If you want. All right, so these are just some combinations that you can start trying for yourself and see how they work. Let me know what you think. If you have any questions, write them at the bottom of the video. Thanks for watching, and see you next time. Bye.